Hi, I'm Mark Montgomery here with some great college advice and today we're going to talk about Dartmouth College. There are probably at least three things you need to know about Dartmouth College and maybe that's prefaced by first the fact that I went there. So I know a lot about the school, both good and bad, and while I'm a loyal alumnus, I'm not beyond seeing the warts on the uh, on on the actual institution. So uh, it's a great place. It's not for everyone. But what are some things that you need to think about as you're examining Dartmouth College in the context of the other seven Ivy League institutions? Well, the first thing is it's the smallest of all the other Ivy League schools. That means that Dartmouth College, and it is the only college among the Ivy Leagues, classes generally are going to be smaller. They are generally going to be taught by professors. While there are some professional schools at Dartmouth, they are very much disconnected from the undergraduate experience. There is a growing number of graduate students in the arts and sciences, shall we say, and there's actually a change now that they're creating a school for all of those programs. But the numbers of graduate students that are actually in the classroom with the undergraduate students, really insignificant. Whereas at some of the other larger Ivies like Penn or Cornell, you're going to see graduate students a lot, not so at Dartmouth. The, the second thing that you might think about is Dartmouth is geographically the most remote. It's two hours, almost exactly, by car from Logan Airport in Boston. and. Um, it is in the, the woods. We, we, we talk about it, in, you know, the granite of New Hampshire and the woods and all that, that stuff. But the area of the upper valley of the Connecticut River is actually relatively cosmopolitan. There are lots of startups in the area. Housing prices are kind of crazy because lots of people want to live there. There's the Dartmouth Hitchcock Hospital as well as the Veterans Hospital, which makes it a medical center for all of upper New England. It has a great arts um, center, the Hopkins Center, which is a magnet for artistic uh, creativity in the region. It doesn't feel remote. The, there is only there are only a couple of stoplights, maybe three, four stoplights in the whole town, but um, it it doesn't feel like it is in the boonies. Actually, it's it's relatively cosmopolitan atmosphere. The Third thing is that Dartmouth is, has often been considered the most conservative of the Ivies, and in some ways that's true. It's certainly the Ivy that has the greatest uh, participation in the Greek system, so a overwhelmingly uh, a, a overwhelming percentage of students, and last I heard at a reunion was that about 70 percent of students belong to either fraternity or sorority. Now, that is, it's definitely true that um, that culture you know, it may, may or may not be your thing. However, there are um, openly gay members of fraternities. There's actually recently was an openly gay president of a fraternity. Uh, it is not a in completely intolerant environment. And of course, you also have to look at the fact that like all of the IVs, the demographic is changing. Whereas all of the IVs used to be dominated by white Anglo-Saxon Protestants that kind of looked like me. Actually now, only 47 per students, according to according to st statistics reported to the government, only 47% of students at Dartmouth are white. There are 14% who are Asians, 7% are black or African American, 8% are Latino or Hispanic, and a interesting 2% are actually Native Americans because Dartmouth was established way back in 1769 to educate Native Americans. It's a promise that they actually didn't make good on until 1970s when President Kemeny at the time said we must do what we said we're going to do. So they've made a very concerted effort to recruit Native Americans with some success. Also we have to remember that 5% of students are of more than one race which is kind of the way America rolls right now and there are 9% of students who did not declare their race on the forum. Either that's because they were confused and didn't know how to answer the question or Actually, more likely, I like to think these are guilt-ridden uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant types who decide that they just are feeling too guilty about their white privilege and decide not to mark their race on the form. So anyway, however you slice it, Dartmouth is a much more diverse place, certainly than when I went there and certainly the generation before. So while it's conservative, maybe because of the fraternity system, 
that doesn't mean that it's uh, an intolerant place. I would also highlight the fact that because of its remote location, it is a paradise. If you're interested in outdoor activities of any kind, they have their own skiway. They have they own a mountain with this really cool lodge at the bottom of it. So if you want to go hiking at any time, and there's this network of cabins and stuff, it's really a cool place if you're interested in the outdoors. So Dartmouth, the smallest of the Ivy League, yeah, most remote, but not in the boonies. Conservative, perhaps by some measures, but certainly reflective of the American population and certainly reflective of all the other Ivy League schools. And if you like the woods, it's the place to be. So check out Dartmouth. And if you're interested in figuring out how to get in, let me know. Give me a call.